Hello, and welcome to the inaugural edition of Kamoin Associates' new interview series, where we learn a little bit more about our awesome staff members and take a closer look at what we do and how we work. Um, my name is Jelaine Jordan, and I am the Graphics and Communications Specialist here at Kamoin Associates. Today, I'm speaking to Rachel Selsky, Kamoin Associates' Vice President and Chief Operating Officer and one of its newest owners. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, to kick things off, why don't you tell us a little bit about your job here at Kamoin, how long you've worked here, and why you decided to become an owner? Great. Thank you. And thank you, Jelaine, for organizing this. I think this will be a really fun thing for us to do. Like, I think many others who have found themselves working in a career in economic development, it wasn't top of mind when I was growing up as a pop possible option. It wasn't something I came across every day, and so I wasn't very familiar with it. I stumbled my way into urban planning while at college, and I always think it reminded me of my favorite computer game, SimCity, um, and that's kind of had that nice connection. And, and it really, the more I learned about it, the more I liked the idea of being able to make a positive change for people through the built environment. And I definitely still feel that way with the work that I'm doing today, and hopefully making others' lives better in some way both through the, the client work that we're doing in communities across the country or for our Kamoin crew staff members and just making their day-to-day -day work life a little bit better. I've been with Kamoin Associates for 14 years now and have done just about everything. My job now as a COO is focused more on the day-to-day -day workings of the company from personnel and human resources managing network security and equipment, and also helping staff around workload management and time management skills. I work closely with Rob Kamoin and the other staff to support execution of the company's strategic plan that we create every year that outlines our goals for the year, as well as the tactics we will take to achieve those goals as a company. I still do some project management work and project work as needs arise, especially in the impact analysis and workforce development service lines. I decided to become an owner this past year because I really believe in the work that we're doing at Kamoin Associates and more importantly, the people that are doing it. And I wanted to be a part of that. I have felt hugely committed to the company for a long time now, and I wanted a way to invest in the company's growth and future and also invest in myself and in the work that I was doing every day. Working with the other co-owners, especially the newer co-owners of Tom Dretzky and Krista Franzi has been really rewarding and just learning alongside them to see how the, the company functions and how to look ahead and, and how to make investments within the company so that it continues to grow and be successful and, and be able to attract and retain incredible staff like we're able to has been really uh, fun and I, I look forward to, to seeing where it goes. Thank you. Um, so as our viewers can probably see, we're not in the same room together for this interview. Um, in fact, we're both working remotely in our home offices on opposite sides of the country. Um, I'm in Washington State and you're in Rhode Island. Yeah. Um, and we're able to do this because the leadership at Coin Associates made the decision to go 100% remote last year, I believe, and do not plan to go back to working in person anytime soon. So can you tell us more about how and why the decision to go remote was made? Yeah, absolutely. So we initially went remote like so many others back in March, 2020. Uh, prior to that, we had a few people here or there working remote. I had been working remote for about 10 years uh, before the pandemic in Vermont. And I kind of always assumed that would be a short transitional phase. And then I'd find something real and in person, uh, but the, the remote work just continued to work for me. So we had a few people here and there uh, working remotely prior to the pandemic. And then once the pandemic hit, of course, we sent everyone home. We'd had a, an office in Saratoga Springs, New York and Richmond, Virginia. And so it was a real scramble there at first to make sure everyone had their computers and equipment and network security tight uh, so that the, the work for our clients could continue. But once we kind of settled into it, we realized that there was continuing to be really good work and that the, the staff were finding flexibility and they were finding that they were happy to be working from home. And so we made the decision to go fully remote 
and it hasn't always been easy. There, there's certainly challenges, but it really has been a good decision for us and we hope for, for the staff as well. Thanks. Um, what have been some of the pros and cons of going remote? Yeah, absolutely. So I would say the positives range from the big things, like the ability to recruit talent and staff from all around the country. Uh, we were able to bring you on, Jelaine, as well as folks in Indianapolis, um, Montana, Colorado, all over the country to join the team and other Prior to being remote, we wouldn't have been able to do that. So that's a really big thing that we've seen as a positive for us. But on the smaller side, of course, there's things like no commute for staff, greater flexibility throughout the day to, to take care of things you need to do. And, a, and a really, we've seen a greater commitment throughout the organization to intentional staff team building. Uh, we really had to focus on it. We recognize the need to have tight relationships with each other and the benefits that come from strong working relationships. And so we've been investing in that. For example, we're planning our first all staff retreat in Richmond, Virginia this coming fall, which I'm really looking forward to. I'll get to meet you in person. I'm so excited. And there's, you. you know, many other staff that I've never met. We talk every day, but I've never seen them in person. So I'm looking really forward to that event will do company strategic planning as well as just some social activities. So we've had to, to start investing in things like that. And we've also instituted things like get to know you questions at staff meeting. And we're trying to encourage us all to, to not just get down to business when we have meetings, but take a few minutes to check in with each other, ask how they're doing, get to know each other on a more personal level. And I think it has been really humanizing for the company to focus on that. We're not always just, you know, work, work, work. We're really getting to know each other. And I think that's been a real positive coming out of being remote and recognizing the need to focus on that. Some of the challenges, of course, are, you know, uh, issues around technology. It's very hard to troubleshoot a computer issue from a distance. Uh, it's hard to um, have the the more organic, natural social aspect of the office, like lunch together or, or an impromptu happy hour, that kind of stuff does get lost. And then the need to really focus on onboarding and the onboarding process uh, has definitely been a challenge. It's all been very manageable so far and we're constantly learning and adjusting to, to make sure that it's working uh, for everyone as best it can. Great, thanks. How has working remotely changed Kamoin Associates onboarding onboarding process for new employees? Yeah, the onboarding process has been really interesting. I think when we were smaller and all in the office, it happened much more uh, organically that a new person would come into the office. They could just maybe, you know, accidentally overhear on someone on a phone call and understand how to handle that situation or be pulled into a meeting or just be able to walk over and ask a question about a particular project. There's just a bit more friction to asking those questions when you're remote. Um, and so we've been really uh, focused and strategic around designing an onboarding process uh, for the first two weeks where you're meeting with different people, you're getting the lay of the land, getting your feet wet with all the different processes and approaches and the Kamoin way to doing the work that we do. Um, and one of the things we most recently implemented when we had about four people start uh, in this this early part of last year was we identified mentors for them. So this would be like a go-to person that they could, they would check in with every day, even just for 15 minutes and say, you know, what are you working on? What do you have questions about? Just so that there was a, a consistent touch point uh, so that they could ask a question, you know, silly questions that maybe they didn't want to bother me with or others. They felt like they couldn't bother others with they always had that person that they could ask those questions to. And I think that's hopefully been positive and we'll continue to do that going forward. Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, as somebody who is a newer hire or earlier this year, um, yeah. I really have nothing but lovely things to say about your onboarding process. It was literally the best one I've ever had in my career. So <laughs> kudos on that. Um, and so um, in conclusion, just on this topic of yeah. working remotely, would you recommend it to other firms? Well, I certainly think you need to have the option available for flexibility. 
Um, I know different firms have different needs for in-person conversations and, and, you know, maybe they're drawing on maps or all that kind of thing that really is well suited for being there in person, but having the option to be hybrid in some sort or fully remote has been a really valuable staff recruitment and retention tool for us. And that is such a critical piece of the work we do is having the staff that can do the, the awesome work for our clients. And so we found it to be critical to our ability to continue to be successful and continue to push the envelope for our clients. And so I would you know, encourage all firms to, to really consider that as a way to provide your staff with flexibility and recognize them as full humans and not just you know, needing to be in that seat all the time, but recognizing the, the desire to have a life outside of the office as well. And it's worked for us. You know, it, it does require some flexibility and, and changes to the status quo, but overall, I think it's been a really positive change for us. I agree. Um, well, I, for one, I'm super grateful for Kamoyan Associates' decision to go remote because it gave me an incredible opportunity to do work for a highly respected community and economic development mm -hmm. firm without having to move across the country for it. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> um, and thank you also for being the first guest on our interview series, Rachel. Yes. Yeah, and um, for our viewers to see upcoming episodes in this series, please follow Kamoin Associates on LinkedIn or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.